It's the Tony Rose Show, D93, and we are joined by the front man of one of the most legendary rock and roll bands of all time, ACDC. And, of course, his new memoir is a perfect stocking stuffer this holiday season, The Lives of Brian. It's the one and only, the iconic Brian Johnson. Good morning, sir. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Tony. Good morning, everybody. Oh, what an honor to have you on. How, is, uh, how has life been treating you? How has uh, how the last year or two been? I know it's been crazy times for so many people out there. How are you holding up through all of this? Uh, you know, it, thankfully, we're getting slowly back to normal and all that, you know, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been all right, but, you know, it's like everything. I just kind of wait to get started again, and, you know, this book sort of took me a lot of me time up, you know, because I wrote it by hand because I kind of type basically. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I've been to England visiting all my old pals and the family and, uh, you know, talking with the boys in the band and just, you know, having a good time basically, you know, as good a time as I can. You know, when you sit down to write a memoir, it obviously takes you back to a lot of unique chapters and places in your life uh were there some that were very fun to kind of go back and revisit as you were putting pen to paper and were there some that were very difficult to go back to uh when you're putting pen to paper yeah you're right you know but the thing is when you're writing things by hand you know that they, they really do come through the heart down the arm and then they you know you write it down the way you feel it it's com- completely different you know than uh typing you know you really feel it and uh so, but all you know i was just looking at the start and what, when people said you know you got to write a book and i said well why you know the, there's a, a memoir out every week by some old fart <laughs> rock and roll or something you know it's heavy. i said well you know but the they just said, you know, some of the stories are just fascinating, you know, because, you know, when I joined ACDC, people were saying, who is this guy, you know, and nobody knew much about, but the, 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 the story of how I got there in the first place, you know, for meeting Bon Scott in 1973 in a seaside town, you know, and I didn't know it was Bon Scott at the time. We were just two singers in two different bands having a beer. You know, and then never seeing each other again, you know, uh, and it wasn't until suddenly I saw ACDC on the TV and I went, I know that guy. You know? <laughs> so all those wonderful stories, you know, and all my good friends, you know, I wanted to make sure I got it right, you know, and yeah. all my old pals at school or when I was in the Airborne uh, and my very first band you know these guys were important and they're still alive and i still have a beer with them and they're still my best friends you know even the one one was a bus driver all his life that's all he ever <laughs> wanted to be and they're still good pals and i'm i'm proud of that you know yeah. that uh, i never drifted too far away from them all you know i think that is what uh, i think that's what makes the book so endearing and your story so endearing talking to brian johnson of course the lives of brian the new memoir uh so much acdc uh knowledge in there so many stories but also just from the from your real world as well growing up to where we we are now uh it's out it's available people can get it and it makes the like i said the perfect stocking stuffer uh you know going back to 1980 when acdc you know, you had the chance to to take over as you know as the lead there for ACDC. What yeah. was that moment like when you walk into that room and you realize that they're handing over the keys to the this rock and roll kingdom to you, basically? Yeah, it, it was. You know, it, the more I think back on it, the more clear it becomes. You know, I guess it's just you know when you get on in life, you suddenly realize the the important parts, you know, and I remember walking in that door um, and Malcolm Young walking yeah. over to me with a bottle of Newcastle Brown Ale a beer, you know, right. uh, which is what, where I came from, and he said, there you go, mate, and I thought, oh, I could murder this, you know, I've been <laughs> driving for six hours or something, and I necked it, and he says, right, what do you want to do? I remember looking around the room, and it's and in the book it tells you as well, you know, and the, all 
couple of guys were sitting down with the guitars, and there must have been through about five, six, seven singers. I really don't know. And, you know, they the weren't the jolliest guys because they just lost their best friend. You yeah. know, people, you know, people think about, you know, that for me it was a great thrill and all that. For them, you know, uh, you're seeing these guys coming in one after the other, uh, replacing the guy that they were never going to see again. It's a, it must have been difficult. But the magic of it was, our, Mal said, well, what do you want to sing? And I thought, and I said, well, how about Nutbush City Limits by Tina Turner? And he went, what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, really? He, I said, do it in the key of air. And uh, he said, oh. And he started playing it, and Angus has gone, hang on. How do you? And then before you knew it, the boys all started playing. Phil started hitting the drums. I, and I'd never heard of anything like it in my life. You know, there was I had a band in Newcastle at the time who were very good, but this this was from another level. And I just started singing me heart out, and I just had a ball. And then he said, "You know any more?" And I said, "I know a whole lot of Rosie." And I said, "Right, well, let's get into that." And off off we went. But I remember at the end I finished. And everybody was just sort of glancing at each other. Nobody knew quite what to say. And I just said, well, lads, thank you so much for that. I can't wait to get back to Newcastle and tell my band that I sang a couple of songs with you. So thanks. And I, I was walking out and I said, where are you going? <laughs> I've got to drive home. I've got to open the shop up in the morning. And I've got a gig tomorrow night. And I went, you can't leave. we just started. I said, <laughs> <laughs> and the rest. I couldn't quite believe it, and uh, and I was walking down the stairs, yeah. and the manager ran after me, and he just said, yeah. Give, I need your number. <laughs> so, and anyway, the, it was as silly as that, Tony, you know. Oh, man. But it, was, it was wonderful. It and the was rest wonderful. is Rock and Roll Hall of Fame history there, for sure. Real quick, before I let you get out of here, uh, thank you so much for bringing us songs that we sing along to that still pack houses. An iconic Mount, Rush, Mount Rushmore rock and roll band, ACDC. Real quick, in like 15 seconds, what would you say to, to your fans uh, that, are, that are so loyal to you guys? If you, just a chance to connect with them real quick as they're listening. What, a parting words for them. Uh, lads, I want to wish you all the very best over the season. And just stick with us because we're going to stick with you. The new book is The Lives of Brian by Brian Johnson, a memoir perfect this holiday season. A true honor. Thank you, sir. Have a great day and a happy holiday, my friend. And the same to you, Tony. Bye-bye, me bunny lad.